public has spoken with their 47th president of the United States being Donald Trump. So what might it mean for equity markets? Our chief investment officer is here to discuss. How are you, Patrick? I'm good, Erica. How are you? I'm okay. Let's talk about markets right now in light of this big US news. Yeah, and I think the surprising thing, I think, for a lot of market participants is the degree of strength in the majority that Trump has won, not just from the presidency perspective, taking a big portion of the um, of the vote, yeah. but also from a Senate perspective, the way the Republicans now control the Senate, and it's still uh, an open race on the House. However, you know it looks like there's going to be a Republican House as well, so that's a clean sweep environment. Equity markets do like a clean sweep environment because it is a situation where any sort of policy changes do sort of come through quite strongly. They can get done, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think yeah, Trump has been very clear in terms of what uh, policy initiatives are going to be, and they're very pro-business, lower taxes for longer, um, how the tariffs are going to sort of play out, and also the deregulation piece. So all those are very much factoring into the way that the market has performed and reacted to the actual results. So this is interesting because it's he's doing a lot of things that haven't been done before, right? And I think that people won't really, or equity markets won't really know what to be expecting because it's things that we haven't seen. Yes, yeah, so look, I think to, to an extent, um, there was a lot of uncertainty sort of leading into it. Is it actually going to result in the outcomes right. that he is expecting? I think that, that that's one of the sort of key things. That yes, we can see that lower taxes are going to be good for companies. We can see that tariffs are going to protect a lot of U.S. industry, and yeah, you know, that's obviously a good thing from a U.S. perspective. And some of the deregulation piece is going to make it easier, less red tape for a lot of businesses and employers to basically do what they um, what they need to do. However, it's more like a shot of adrenaline into your arm. You know, from a US economic perspective, yes, it's very good in the short term. And we're seeing that in the, in the reflection on markets. In the longer term, you know, a lot of these policies are going to be inflationary. I don't think anyone would sort of doubt that too much. And it is going to put the Federal Reserve into a very sticky position. Yeah. Not just politically, because Trump has highlighted that he wants more involvement in the monetary policy decisions. That's a disaster on any front. And we've seen that obviously the bond yields rise quite substantially. And I think if he does start to play around with getting involved more at the Federal Reserve, I think that the bonds will actually take another leg um, in terms of negative price performance off the back of that. You don't want to mess around with the independence of the central bank. So that's a concern. Yeah. However, now that he's in and he's seen his position, maybe there are some things he'll just sort of step back from. I mean, there are a lot of initiatives that he would look to unwind yeah. in terms of just the Paris Accord, you know, the, the tax credits or the credits that have been applied for any sort of green energy initiatives coming through off the Inflation Reduction Act that was put in by Biden. Those are the elements that may get unwound. However, you know, it is that drill baby drill type scenario. And I think that that is concerning from the environmental perspective. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to touch on here is Bitcoin has reached some all time highs. <laughs> Um, it is interesting, <laughs> I think, when, so when we do comment about some of the cryptocurrencies, you know, Trump is a supporter yeah. in terms of where... A very they, vocal supporter. A very vocal yeah. supporter. And so it just takes away some of that uncertainty piece. And I think in the lead up to the election, it did feel like it was quite a close call. The pollsters did get it wrong yeah. um, in terms of how close it was going to be. But now those, those, let's say, those securities that are basically benefiting from some of the initiatives that have been talked about, understand that there are very few real policy initiatives that have been highlighted in terms of detail. That still needs to come through. Yeah. You know, the intent is probably there, but the detail in the policy 
is not there yet. And so there's the, a lot of talk so far, and not a lot, a lot of, of talk. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, how we get down to the action piece will be very telling over the course of 2025. And then the follow on from that is how much is it going to cost from a tax perspective? Because whatever they can't raise in revenue, they have to fund it through debt. And so the debt situation in the US is already dire. Yeah. So higher sort of uh, fiscal deficits are just going to result in more and more debt that needs to be issued. Who's going to buy that? Who's going to pay for it? And to understand too that the rest of the world is going to have to pay for some of these protection initiatives that are being put into the US. So this is why Europe has, has basically suffered to a degree, um, even though their, their shares have basically bounced back a little bit this morning. So we just need to wait and see. So how might or should the central bank react to this? Because again, this is kind of unprecedented stuff we're taking a look at. It's, it's a very tricky situation for the US central bank at the moment because Jerome Powell has highlighted that he needs to see inflation get down as well as other FOMC members. Now, when we're looking into the future and we look at where the balance of risks are to inflation versus growth, a lot of the numbers that we've seen more recently are much stronger on the growth side. And that's been a surprising element. So we changed tack in terms of the situation in the US moving from a hard landing recession type scenario to a no landing scenario and they're just going to continue to power on. Now, if I'm a central banker, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, well, the balance of risks to the growth side are now a lot more in equilibrium. However, with some of the now with the initiatives that are potentially being framed here from a fiscal policy perspective, that's going to be inflationary. Do I need to keep rates higher mm. in order to sort of stem some of the inflationary impacts that are coming through from these growth policies? If he does that, then he essentially puts a lot more focus on the fact that um, if he doesn't cut rates and if the central bank doesn't continue to cut rates, then you know, he's, he's going to have to deal with the ramifications of more pressure coming down onto the central bank from the president. Right. That's a very dangerous situation and it's an extremely slippery slope. So, you know, I think what we need to do is we need to we need to highlight that from an investor perspective, the independence of the central bank is imperative for the continuation of smooth economic policy and the way that central banks look at this is the translation mechanism of their monetary policy tightening or cutting actually then sort of translates into how the economy then is expected to perform going forward and it's all supposition on expectation it's not anything necessarily about what the presence of the situation is so it does put the fed in a very compromised position however um yeah this is a political position you know the the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is the president's appointment. So no matter what, Powell's going to be in a very sort of sticky situation. And any sort of change at this particular point, I think is going to be reflected in volatility in markets. Absolutely. Lots there and developing stories here. Patrick, thank you very so much. much for all that expertise here today. That was great. Thanks, Eric. Cheers.